Four minutes and counting. Four minutes. All systems go in three minutes. Three minutes. Only one minute until program launch. One minute. Exactly 30 seconds remaining. All indicators are good. All readouts are positive. Final 10 second countdown will begin shortly. Please count along. Countdown beginning now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Here we are at day four already. We're wow. glad you joined just us. Me, just flying right by. We're glad you joined us for our venue adventure. We hope you're enjoying yourself, but we hope you're learning a lot as well. That's right. So we have a cool Bible lesson today. 
I'm really good friends with the person who's going to be doing the lesson. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm I know excited the person, about this. I know the person really well. So, you, doing so the you, you probably know the story pretty well. Yes, huh? yes, I do. I do. We're talking about Saul. Right. And uh, how Jesus got a hold of him. Right. We don't want to share too much. Yeah. But, uh, he just got a really big light bulb bulb said today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. And so, and we've got a, a science moment with. Um, Mirrors and right. water. Prisms and bubbles and all kinds of cool things. Yes, so. so it's going to be a fun day. So we need to move right along. Then. Right. So we'll see you at the end. I've got the spirit down in my soul. It feels electric, thrilling when it fills me up. I feel with patience and self-control Goodness and kindness spilling from me like a cup I've got God's goodness in my pocket I've got that kindness in my feet I feel that spirit in my body when it comes Oh, I can't take my eyes off him Feeling so phenomenally You will like the way it feels you So just stop into the world Just imagine, just imagine Jesus can be seen in you Just dance, dance, dance Gentleness pouring from you Just dance, dance, dance Faithfulness flowing in you Just dance, dance, dance Jesus is never leaving you So just keep dancing, dancing. Dance, dance, dance. dance up the spirit So just dance, dance, dance Dance up the spirit Just dance, dance, dance. self-control goodness and kindness filling from me like a cup i've got god's goodness in my pocket got that kindness in my feet feel that spirit in my body when it comes oh i can't take my eyes off him feeling so phenomenally when you like the way it feels you just stop into the world Not everyone knows god came to Just imagine, just imagine. Jesus shines within you now. You dance, dance, dance. Peace and love and joy came down. Just dance, dance, dance. The Holy Spirit's in you now. Just dance, dance, dance. Jesus will never let you down. So just keep dance, dancing. Dance, dance, dance. Dance up the Spirit. So just dance, dance, dance. Dance up the Spirit. Just imagine, just Hi folks, Tom again. Continuing talking about the fruit of the Spirit. This one I want to talk about two more. The first is gentleness. We live in a world that everything you hear today is about being gentle. You would think that you are weak. Nah, that's not true. Gentleness really means to have great power. And choosing to use it in a compassionate way to benefit others. Jesus was very powerful. But in Matthew, 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 Matthew 11, 29, he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. Jesus was gentle, but he also had great power. I mean, after all, he was God, right? 
Reminds me of a story. A woman was brought in front of Jesus that had been found doing something wrong. And Jesus said to those people who had brought this woman and threw him at his feet, he said, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. A little side note here. Jesus was the only one there without sin. So he was the only one there with the power to judge her. Instead, he chose, he chose to be gentle and to forgive her. If you truly understand gentleness, I think it's a key to understand God's grace. God has the power to judge us. And in doing so, we would be apart from him forever and ever and ever and ever. And, well, you get the picture. But God, instead of throwing a stone and judging us, he sent Jesus. Think about that. Gentleness is summed up like this. When you have the power to break something, you choose to mend it or fix it. Wow. Self-control, there's a biggie. When we think about self-control, we think that we are the ones doing the controlling. I already ate a cookie. I had a cookie here and I already ate it. I forgot I was going to use it for this video. No self-control on my part, was there? But Paul, when listening to the fruit of the Spirit, must have known self-control would not happen without the help of the Holy Spirit working in our minds and in our heart. Self-control is more than just saying no. The difference between worldly self-control and Christian self-control is this. It's who we look for to help us and who we give the credit to when we do get it. So the source of the power comes from where? We need to rely on the power of God that lives in us to help us fight off those temptations. Yes, we have a part to play in all this, but the true power comes from God. So when we overcome that temptation, who gets the credit? Yay, I did it, I did it, I did it. Or do we say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, for the self-control that helped me fight and win over that temptation. In closing, self-control does not come from yourself. Rather, it is a fruit that we bear that is produced by the Spirit living within us. Thanks for joining me once again. Have a good night.
math. I wrote the book on math. You wrote our math book? No, no, it's just a figure of speech. I mean, I'm really good at it. Well, listen to this story problem from our math book. A train is going 100 miles an hour down a track that's 400 miles long. How many hours before the train gets to the end of the track? Easy! Four hours! I know the answer is four hours, Shelley, but what happens when the train gets to the end of the track? Does it crash? Does it drive off the end of the world? Are there passengers on board? Are they hurt? What if they don't have any band-aids on the train? Don't you care about this at all? Sid, 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 you need, seriously need to chill out, bud. You're totally upset about this story problem, and it's only make-believe. Upset? I am not upset. Oh, okay, okay. So, back to what you were saying. Why are you scared of the test tomorrow? You knew the answer to the problem. Yeah, but what if my pencil breaks during the test? Mr. Jones is not going to let me sharpen and get another one. He's also not going to let me use crayons to finish the test. And what if I get locked in the bathroom when I'm trying to get ready for school and I scream and I scream and nobody hears me? Oh, Sid, have you ever heard of the fruit of the Spirit? No, what's the fruit of the Spirit? It's in the Bible, Galatians 5.22. One of them is peace. Peace is what you need, dude, and I'm talking big time. What's peace? And, and how is it going to help me? Peace is something God gives us that lets us know that everything is going to be okay. Peace is a feeling that no matter what happens, God is still the boss. And since he loves us, we're going to be okay. That sounds great. How can I have peace like that? You can do what I did a few months ago. Believe on Jesus as your Savior. What do you mean? How about we talk about it on the way to the ice cream place? Yeah, we can study more later. I want to hear some more about Jesus and the peace of God. Guys, I'm back. Boy, you wouldn't believe the super cool spy telescope I got in the mail. I saved all my bubblegum wrappers and sent them in, and they sent me the telescope. Hey, guys? Guys? Shelly? Sid? Oh, bummer. I bet they went to the ice cream without me. Maybe I can catch up with them. Guys! me to listen. I don't want to see anymore. Give me a vision that you could move this heart to be set apart. I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror. And I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar. I can't waste a day I can't stay the same I want to be different I want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Is a fire so bright The whole world can see That there's something so come and be different in me. And I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters. And so I'm giving up everything because I want to be different, I want to be changed, till all the bees go home, and all that remains is a fire so bright, the whole world can see that there's something different, so come and be Take this beating in my heart and come and 
and finish what you started When they see me, let them see you Cause I want to be different Yeah Cause I want to be different I want to be changed Till all of me is gold And all that remains Oh, there's a fire so bright The whole world can see us There's something different So come and be that experience where you're sound asleep in your bed it's nice and dark and you're nice and comfy and all of a sudden mom comes in and she flicks those lights on and oh it's so bright and you just get so angry with her for flicking those lights on and waking you up well in our story today we're going to learn about Saul and there's going to be some kind of a light involved in our story so I hope you listen real close to it so today's Bible lesson is from Acts chapter 9. And Saul was not a very nice man. In fact, we learned about Stephen being stoned, and Saul had approved of that killing of Stephen. He was destroying the church, he was putting people in prison, and as we start chapter 9, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So he was taking people as prisoner and throwing them in jail just for believing in Jesus. But as he was going on his way to Damascus, all of a sudden there was this really bright light that shone on it. And I can't imagine having this bright light, just like my intro today. I mean, it's kind of like mom trying to wake you up with that bright light and it's dark. But a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell down to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul kind of looked around. Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Now, meanwhile, the men who are going with him, they're all looking around kind of speechless, not knowing what to say. It says they heard the sound, but they didn't see anybody. Think about that. They heard this voice, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. He was totally blind. So the men that were with him, they led him into the city of Damascus, and it says for three days he was blind and he didn't eat or drink. Now, that was pretty interesting that this all happened to Saul. But the other part of the story that we don't hear as much about is the man that God had prepared in Damascus to help Saul out. His name was Ananias. Now it says, In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. Now, right there, I know, his first response to God is, Yes, Lord? So he was obviously in tune with God. He must have spent a lot of time with God. And the best part was he was ready to follow God. And it says, The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Now I can imagine Ananias, because the stories about Saul were all around there. And he had heard of all the terrible things that Saul was doing to the Christians. I mean, 
He was taking them, throwing in in jail. He had allowed Stephen to be stoned and killed. I mean, can you imagine if God tells you to go to this man who has been killing Christians and put your hands on him? And Ananias goes, Lord, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your holy people in Jerusalem. He's come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But, it says, the Lord said to Ananias, Go! This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Now, I'm, I'm still thinking about this because Ananias didn't hesitate. He didn't argue with God anymore. Now, how many times has God asked you to do something? Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's something a little difficult. Maybe, maybe God wants you to be kind to your friend. That's pretty easy. But maybe God asks you to be kind to that bully over there who's not been so nice to you. Well, that's, that's kind of what God was asking Ananias to do. Ananias was, ha was going to go to Saul. Saul was the person who was persecuting the Christians. And I can't imagine Ananias didn't hesitate. When God said go, it's the next verse says, Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. It doesn't say Ananias took the long way around the block. It doesn't say Ananias stopped and he prayed about it. It says Ananias went to the house and he entered it. It says, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, wow, Brother Saul, he's calling him his brother. That's pretty cool right there. The Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may be see you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I like the next verse. It says immediately. There wasn't any hocus pocus, there wasn't any waiting. It says immediately. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Now scales, it's kind of like a heavy covering over your eyes. Kind of you had, it's like you had a blindfold on that you absolutely couldn't see out of. And those heavy scales, just when he said that, they fell right off of him. And Saul, after three days of not being able to see, could see once again. But then the cool part is, it says he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Now, Ananias did what God asked him to do. He didn't argue with God. He didn't question it. God wants us to be like that. God wants us, if God asks you to do something, he wants you to do it. There's a lot of things in the Bible that God tells us to do. God tells us to be kind to each other. God says to honor our father and our mother. God says to obey our parents. Ooh, is that a little bit hard with all this quarantine stuff going on sometimes? And being nice to your brothers and sisters? Yeah, but God wants us to do those things. And I really appreciate Ananias in this story because Ananias didn't hesitate to do what God asked him to do. He went immediately. Once God talked to him, told him, this is what I want you to do, he went and did it. And the cool thing, if you go on in this chapter, it says Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, can you imagine if Ananias hadn't followed through with God's plan? Now, God probably would have figured out another way for Saul to be able to see and go on. 
But can you imagine what joy it must have brought Ananias to watch and see what God did in Saul's life? I mean, it, it says, at once he began to preach in the synagogues. It wasn't like it took Saul weeks and weeks and weeks. Saul instantly, once he gained his sight, he was baptized, and he went and he preached in the synagogues, and he taught about Jesus. So this week, you can think about Saul and his major conversion, which was a big thing. But I want you also to think about Ananias this week. Think about what Ananias did. What kind of a spirit Ananias had. Ananias was willing to do what God asked him to do. And I'm going to challenge each one of you this week to do what God asks you to do. You might not hear that audible voice that says, this is what I want you to do. But you know what? God gave us his Bible, his word. If you read the Bible and you pray and you talk to God, God will tell you what you need to do. He'll help you to do the right thing, just like Ananias did. And look what happened with what Ananias did. Many people came to know Jesus because of what Ananias did in helping Saul change his life. Thank you very much. It was good to see you guys. Take care. Hopefully we'll see you soon in person. Hi everybody. Welcome back to day four of VBS. Um, today's Bible lesson was pretty cool. Um, a man named Saul was on his way to Damascus to persecute or be really mean and arrest and uh, put Christians in prison. And on his way, he met Jesus. And he was filled with some not really good feelings. He was filled with um, hatred and jealousy and anger. And then when he met Jesus on the road, he became filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus shared the fruits of the Spirit with him, and immediately he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to do a little science experiment that kind of ex explains Saul's conversion. All right, so um, in these cups over here, I have some vegetable oil. In these cups over here, I have some water with some food coloring in it. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit more water to both of these. Yeah, just they have to be as full as I can get them almost overflowing and I'm actually going to add a tiny bit more oil to both of these right there look at that oh I just spilled a little bit on the table that's okay all right so on the way to Damascus oh um, this is just a playing card I pulled the joker out of a deck of cards I'm going to put that on there like that on the way to Damascus, Saul was filled with hatred. He was filled with um, mean thoughts. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was not filled with the fruits of the Spirit. So as he went, he... Look at that. Pretty cool. So when he met Jesus on the road... Um, Jesus shined a really bright light on him and like yelled down, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then immediately when, um, so this was Saul. I, I'm sorry, I pulled that out. I'm like, so this was uh, Saul before he met Jesus. I started to get ahead of myself there. So this was Saul before he met Jesus. So like nothing really happened. You know, he's got those bad feelings on the top. Okay. And then when Saul meets Jesus on the road and Jesus shares the fruit of the Spirit with him, some pretty cool things happen. So what I did there is I turned the oil over on top of the water. So what if I tried it the other way? What if I turned the water on top of the oil? I grabbed that glass the wrong way. Okay, I'm going to set that down on there. So now, like I was saying, Jesus met Saul on the road and Saul realized who Jesus was. And then all of the things that he knew about Jesus all started to come together. And then he became a believer in Jesus. He realized that Jesus was 
the Messiah. He realized that Jesus was his Savior, and then he immediately accepted Jesus into his heart. And then here's what happens when we do that. You ready? Jesus shared the fruit of the Spirit with him, and immediately Saul was filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was a changed man. He was no longer Saul of Tarsus. Jesus changed his name to Paul. And instead of persecuting and being mean and uh, arresting Jews and putting them in jail, he started spreading the good news about Jesus. So I'm going to end today's lesson with your choice. Are you going to harbor bad thoughts and um, not demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit? Or are you going to accept Jesus as your Savior and ask Him to come into your heart so you can immediately be changed and have the Spirit inside you and demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit to everyone else? Have a good night. Take care. All week we've been learning about the fruit of the Spirit. We have also begun to learn this fruit is a way in which others can see Jesus and God within us. Today for our activity we're going to play with bubbles. Why? Is it because bubbles are fun? Well, they are, but that's not really the reason why. Bubbles act like a prism, bending sunlight. The light coming in is composed of all colors of the rainbow, and based on the thickness of the bubble, all the different colors refract off in a different way. Just like a prism, we get the whole spectrum in every bubble. As you play with your bubbles, look and see how many colors you can see. God gives us the fruit of the Spirit to help us show others what His love looks like. A way to help us remember this is to look at a prism or a bubble. God is like the light. He is pure. He shines into our lives with His love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. No matter how old or young, how big or little we are, Jesus gave us each a job to do. Tell others about God's love for them. One of the loudest ways to do that is to show God's love, love to others. We can choose to make our daily prayer to let the fruits of the Spirit shine within us so that all of us, all of those around us can see Him. Let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Let them see you in me. Yesterday on the lesson time, we talked about Paul and the struggle that he had between the good fruit and the bad fruit. And so I want to kind of explain a little bit about why that struggle is there. You see, the Bible tells us that uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when he created the heavens and the earth, in, in six days he created everything. And on the sixth day, he created man. He created Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden. He told them, you can eat from any tree in the garden that you want to, except for one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, the day you eat from that, you will die. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve disobeyed. They ate from that fruit. And so when they did that, they sinned. And so what happened was, before then, God would come down in the cool of the evening, he'd walk with them and talk with them, kind of like I'm talking with you, and he was close to them, he had a relationship with them. But as soon as they ate from that tree and they sinned, that relationship was separated. It was broken. Now, sin is in the way of having a relationship with God. Unfortunately, Ever since then, every person that's been born has been born separated from God because of sin. You know, the hard part is, there's nothing we can do about that. It doesn't matter how good you are. 
You can never be good enough to get to heaven because sin is separating you from God. There's nothing we can do to get rid of the sin problem. And if the story stopped there, we'd be in big trouble. But it doesn't stop there. The cool thing is, God had a plan. So God was not caught off guard. He was not surprised. He already knew what he was going to do. And so what God did was he gave us the best gift he could possibly give. One that was great for us, but difficult for him because that gift involved his own son, the Lord Jesus. Jesus left heaven, came down to this earth, was born as a baby, and grew up into a man. And all the while he was on this earth, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned a single time. He was perfect. But even though he was sinless, he was perfect, the Bible says he willingly let men nail him on a cross. On that cross, when they put the nails in his hands and in his feet, blood came out. And that's important because Hebrews tells us without the giving of blood, there can be no forgiveness for sins. Jesus loved you so much, he willingly died on that cross, gave his blood to pay for your sins and for my sins. He died on that cross, they took him down, they wrapped his body up in cloth, and they, they put it inside a tomb. But three days later, a couple of women came back. And as they came to the tomb, the stone had been rolled away. They looked inside, the cloth was still there wrapped up, but the body of Jesus was gone. And as they looked up on the rock, there's an angel there, and the angel said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here, for he has risen just as he said. And the Bible makes it very clear. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. And because he's alive, we can have forgiveness of sins. Not because of what we do, but because of what he did. But you know, it's not enough just to know that he lived, that he died, that he rose again. Just knowing that doesn't take away your sin. The Bible says you have to make it personal. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I want to explain what that means. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to admit to God that you've done wrong. That you've sinned, you've done wrong things. Second, believe that Jesus died on that cross for you and came alive again. And then third, choose to ask Jesus to be your Savior, to take away your sins. When you do that, the Bible says you will be saved. You will no longer be separated from God, but you will begin a brand new relationship with God. Sin will no longer separate you from God. You will start a relationship with Him. He'll help you to grow as you spend time on this earth. And then later on when you die, you'll go to heaven to be with Him forever and ever and ever. When you believe on the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you start a relationship with Him that's going to last for all eternity. And there's nothing better than that. Well, we're glad, we're glad you joined us once again. One more day left. Yeah. Can you believe four days are gone already? This, this week is just it's flying, just flying right, right by. by. Yes. But anyway. But again, um, we've said it all along, but one more time, uh, in case you're just joining us for the first time, uh, the boys and girls, when they get here, uh, they will leave with a bag that has a craft activity and a coloring sheet and that kind of stuff in it. So we want to make sure that those of you who are only watching online can still have the craft projects and stuff. Right. So if you have not done so, uh, there's a link on the, on the screen here. Uh, get your parents to go to that link and uh, they can put, put, type in your name and address and how many uh, children are in the household. And we will mail you the craft projects and a couple other activity sheets, that kind of thing. Uh, one packet or one packet per child per family. Uh, they will go out probably. I'm guessing early next week. Probably. We'll mail those we out. Send, we're going to send all of them in one packet, so we don't have to keep mailing things out. Right. So, if you sign up before, you don't need to sign up again. All you need to do is sign up just one one time. Oh, we got one more day left in our vacation Bible school. Right. Hard to believe it's gone by this fast. Well, we hope you'll join us again tomorrow for our final day. Thanks we'll for joining us today. See you tomorrow. Good night.